So today's subject, the Submariner. Nineteen fifty-three sees the birth of the first submariner wristwatch. Rolex continues their exploration models and invents a diver's watch. Made famous by Jacques Cousteau, the watch was originally made with a depth rating of a hundred meters. Later, made most famous in nineteen sixty-two in the film Doctor No by Sean Connery, wearing the famous big crown submariner on a NATO strap. The watch becomes the most iconic of all sports models. The big crown model made famous by Sean Connery was actually a depth rating of 200 meters. It had a larger crown and hence its nickname is now the Rolex Submariner Big Crown. So the early Submariner pieces follow exactly the same styling of the GMT Master with the Bakelite bezel. They have no crown protection around the guard. Very simple classic cases and these pieces in front of you here are known as the small crown versions with a depth rating of 100 meters. Here with that iconic NATO styling. Beautiful tropicalized version of the watch with a matching tan strap. And here a very very rare version with a red triangular insert at the top of the bezel. Again following exactly the same styling as the GMT the early 60s pieces begin to have the pointed crown guard addition, the protection around the winder itself, first made to a very sharp point. Here, from 1963, the most incredible styling of dial. Pumpkin luminous hands, pumpkin luminous plotters, and a faded insert. Absolutely stunning. Here, what? Honestly, as a cracked face, is now known as a spider dial. So, as if a spider has literally walked across the surface of the watch itself. These are actually highly desirable, even though at first glance they look totally, totally damaged. But that is an absolutely unique effect that's now been formed on the dial itself. Without getting bogged down in too much detail, the quickest thing to explain to you is by 1966 the gilt printing on these early watches, the gold text, the physical writing of the word Rolex and the death rating starts to disappear 1966-67 and is then replaced by a white text. The dials go from this very sharp glossy mirror finish to a matte. So you see 1967 a matte finish to the dial. The printing of 200 meters first on the dial has changed to white Otherwise, the styling is very much the same. The next biggest feature to change on the surface of the watch is an addition of the physical date. So Rolex actually introduced the date onto the Submariner model in 1966. Alongside that, they make the quirk of adding red text to the word Submariner. So the early pieces are known literally as red subs. Nice very vibrant, bright red on the word Submariner. This is an early piece from 1969, still retaining the 200 meters first and all its original documentation, which is extremely rare. It has its original sales receipt when it was sold in 1971 and the Rolex warranty with serial number and an additional service booklet again with perforated punched papers making this extremely rare. Here the actual reference of the model itself 1680 the 1680 Submariner with date. This piece from 1968 you can see the inversion of the text so 200 meters first has now been inverted swapped round and it's 660 feet equals 200 meters and that continues now for the rest of the 60s and 70s. As you get to the end of the 1970s, the 5513 model, non-date Submariner model, is then called the maxi dial. So the plotters on the face of the watch themselves have become enlarged. 
all of these features are not, they're kind of accidental, they're not something Rolex particularly planned to do. What they often did was change dial manufacturers throughout this period and therefore a new dial manufacturer would come along and the font would literally just change by design, by, by pure coincidence, but as these pieces have become recognised over the years, we do attach different names to them, so here, the Maxi Art. Because the subject is so huge, I don't really want to bore you with too much intricate detail. However, it is important just to establish that in the early 80s, 1981, um, you see the introduction of the sapphire glass first in the Rolex Submariner date model. The glass becomes sapphire, but the dial itself retains the earlier finish, the matte, until a little bit later on in the 80s. So here, the first known as the transitional submariner. Just fast forwarding now really and coming to the end of the series of the pieces. So uh, middle of the 80s you see the introduction of the glossier finish to the dial. The plotters themselves enamel with white gold circles around the outside. Again very much similar to pieces that we've shown in the GMT video. A 2001 model where all the features we've talked about have kind of come together, sapphire glass, glossy dial, plotters again circled in white gold. And lastly, just to show you the 90s version of the non-date Submariner, same features, sapphire glass has been introduced, gloss dial, enamel, and white gold surrounds. Two pieces here from similar years so you can actually understand this process the traditional all black as it was made, insert the ghost bezel next to it, faded from this to this. Quickly introduce also steel and gold models, with black face and blue face available. All gold models, black face and blue face also. A fistful of tropical dials. Original configuration, blue. This has even faded, but it's the starting point, a blue dial. Purple, a very intense purple, faded from blue to purple. And then caramel, absolutely stunning caramel tone of colour. This would have been, again, a more blue face when originally made. Sunlight, heat, temperature, Exposure to extreme weather conditions all make these pieces so unique. We haven't done this in a while, but what's on your wrist, David? Well, I've got to keep something special for myself. So, Submariner with date, classic looking piece. Doesn't look like anything particularly unusual until you zoom in. Tiffany on the dial. 1680, Submariner, retailed by Tiffany. How far apart are these from the Daytonas? Like, were they the same? Period? All the same periods can be, yeah. So you can have um, Submariners, GMT Masters, Daytonas, Explorers, regular Oysters, Day Dates, all retailed by Tiffany at the time and co signed. So the kind of pinnacle of any sport model is to have a co signature on the face. So Tiffany and Submariner together bit of a showstopper. So I hope you've enjoyed this series that we've been doing on sport models but now I've decided to go back a bit and focus on some of my other passions, the crown collection pieces, the day dates, the heavily jeweled models. So in our next video I'm going to go through a box of crown collection day dates.